be loose today? Shouldn't you be well today? Shouldn't you be out of debt today? Shouldn't your financial situation get healed today? Glory to God. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. And welcome to the most anticipated week of the year at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It's time for Southwest Believers Convention. This is Southwest Live. They I'm, won. They won. I'm Tim Fox, and again, I'm pleased to be joined this year by my good friend, Greg Stevens. How are you, my friend? See, I'm excited. It's going to be a good too. week. People always ask us, how is it you guys have so much fun? And I like to tell people, we both love people, we love God, and we mostly like each other. Mostly. 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 <laughs> we mostly, mostly like Tim, each other. Tim, I tell you, I, um, yesterday it began at Eagle Mountain Church. Yeah, oh yes. And I came in here, and, and usually there's a few people coming in um, registering. Right. On a Sunday night. But right. last night. Last night, the place was packed with people registering. All you people were probably registering right there, last you. night. And it's exciting. There's an excitement in the air yes. this week. I right. believe there's an anticipation. Yes. We're pulling on the prophet, and we're yeah. going to get a word. Absolutely. And this, this program, all this week, 30, uh, eight, 8 o'clock Central every morning, 6 o'clock Central every night, we're going to have a great time this week, a lot of great guests. Greg will be with me. We're going to have some other folks helping us host now, this Now, I'm week mostly... As well. Yeah, we're going to have you out in the book table. No, I'm area. not riding the bull this year, and I no, appreciate it. Well, that. but you. we actually got something out there that will help the bull if you bring the bull in. So you can show people that later on, right? <laughs> I'm on my way. You're on your way. Greg's going to go out and uh, get ready for that. Okay, we got a guest this morning. We'll see you in a few minutes. This morning, our first guest on the program is my good friend Sergio Alvarado. Sergio is a KCM partner, KCM staff member. Amen. Uh, you are part of our ministerial relationship team at KCM, uh, but your story goes way, way back even before that. Tell people where you came from and how God pulled you out of some stuff. Well, I was born in Mexico. I'm not, I'm not going to say Yay, how many years ago, about 57 years ago. I grew up in an environment of drugs, prostitution, uh, you name it. Um, yeah. So through the whole time, you know, I, I, I went to church when I was a little boy. My mom passed away. She, uh, she got involved in prostitution. My dad left us. My brothers were invo involved in heroin. And then as I grew up, went to church for a little while, separated myself from church, and that was the worst mistake I've ever made. Yeah. I, got, I got hooked up in drugs. And for 20 years, I was hooked on, on cocaine, uh, methamphetamines, uh, alcohol, you name it. But I've been free now for 17 years. Isn't yeah, that good? Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> you know... Uh, we've heard often how the power that drugs and alcohol and those substances can have on a person's life. And you were in church and walked away. But I think the key to that is the power of God is much, much stronger than the power of those kinds of things. It just, it just takes you to getting to where you understand that, right? And it took you a while to get there. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of great testimonies of people who, who've been delivered from drugs from, from one minute to the other. Right. And that's great. You know, God does that. But for me, it was a process. It was several months before I got winged off of all the drugs. Right. I mean, the, the Bible says, you know, submit to yourself to God, resist the devil. So there's some resisting that you have to do, yeah. you know, because the devil's going to attack you. And you're right. Uh, drugs and alcohol have a, a very strong hold, but greater is he yes. that is in yes. you than those drugs yeah. that are in the world. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> what, can you remember the actual time when you said enough is enough and God got a hold of you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was sitting out uh, in, um, in El Paso, Texas. I came out of a little trailer where I was living. I sat on outside. I came out. It was on a Wednesday. I cried out to God. I said, God, I can't do this no more. I'm tired of this. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would bleed from my nose of all the cocaine and all, all, all that kind of stuff that I was putting in my nose. And, and I remember that day when I said, God, I need your help. And by Saturday, God had moved in my life. You know, and, wow. and it was, it's, 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 it's great. I mean, the power of the gospel, it delivers you from a lot of things. And not just, not just addictions and right. drugs. Yes. I mean, from any kind, you know, depression, uh, yes. sadness, you all bet. that kind of stuff. Yes. There's power in the gospel. Absolutely. 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 And now you have gone back in to Juarez in those areas to minister now. What's that like for you to now go back to where you came from to minister the Word of God? You know, I'm so thankful to God. I'm so thankful for this ministry. I've been here for, in this ministry now for 13 years. I get to travel with Brother Copeland's team. Uh, this ministry 
has literally changed my life. Mm. You know, and I want to thank all the partners, all those people who have sold into this ministry, because I can assure you there's millions of us out there who has been touched by this ministry. And I want to thank each and every one of you for yeah. what you do. Amen. But uh, I, we went back. Uh, God, has, God had put it in my heart to build a, 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 an orphanage right. for the kids of Juarez, right. where I grew up. Uh, there's a lot of need out there. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount well, of need. Well, you also took time to write a book called Prophet of My Life, <laughs> Prophet of My Own Life. Absolutely. Well, how'd that come about? Well, let me tell you something. About uh, nine, nine, ten years ago, I was sitting at the church at EMIC, and Brother Copeland said something that, I mean, just changed my life. He was sitting there, and he said, you are the prophet of your own life. I said, wow. I mean, that's powerful. <laughs> right. I can do with my life whatever I want to do. But the book of Deut Deuteronomy says that, right? I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, yeah. choose life. Yeah. So when I heard that, it just spoke to my spirit yes. and it changed my life. Right. I mean, literally changed my life where right. I said, you know what? From now on, I am the prophet. Mm. And what's going to happen to me is going to happen to me because I allow it. Yes. I'm not going to let the devil attack me anymore. Amen. I'm walking with God and nothing's going to stop us. Amen. Ooh, that'll preach. And I'll tell you, I am what I am today. Yeah. I am right. what I am today because of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, yeah. and I'm so thankful wow. for that. Now, when you, when you write a book, obviously you sell a book, and when you sell a book, there are profits from that book. What are you doing with the profits from this book? Well, let me tell you something. So I'm so thankful that the ministry has picked up this book, and the ministry is going to distribute it. Yeah. So all the profits of this book right here will go to build a soup kitchen, the church, and the orphanage for the kids of Juarez. All of it. All of We're it. We're not taking anything. All of it is going to theirs. How blessed are you that, that, that you get to do what you do? You travel with Brother Copeland to Latin American countries. In fact, we've got about a minute and a half. Let's talk quickly about our ministry to Latin America and, and how passionate Brother Copeland is about that. Well, I'll tell you, he loves the Hispanic people. Well, he loves all people. How many of you know that, right? <laughs> yeah, so we've been going back. We're getting ready to go. Next year, we're going to be in Peru. And then we're going to go back to Colombia. Right. So we're changing lives. It's a generational thing. You know, right. we're, 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 Brother Copeland's... I mean, Brother Copeland said 82, 83 years old, yeah. and he, he, I mean, he's like a 20-year-old. He can I mean, do push-ups oh, that I can't do. Oh, I'm telling you, you know what, he's in good shape. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, hey, but, he, but he's our example, yeah. and that's where we need to be. So yes. I'm so thankful for Brother Copeland yeah. and this ministry. Well, and he's, what he's done, he's, he's gotten the Word of God that says, you can live to your 120. And he said, you know what, that's part of my calling. I'm going to live to I'm 120, but you have to take care of yourself. That's to do right. That. And, and again, because he's the prophet of his own life. Yes. So he gets to do what he wants yes. to do with his right. life. Right. But God allows us that. So this week, will you also be doing some of the translation? We're, we're translating I, I, the meeting in Spanish, of Absolutely. Course. I'll be back there doing some of the translations. We also contracted some translators because... You know, there's, there's a lot of speakers. But yeah, I've been a tremendous honor. Thank you for all the partners and friends of this ministry. You are part of changing lives around the world. Absolutely, I thank you. absolutely. I know one of the things that you guys do, I don't know if you're doing it this week, are you translating this program as well? Right now, right they're now, doing it right now. Yeah. Is it back. hard to translate for me? No. no. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, you're, you're a little too fast. Good answer. You, you can come back. You can come back. Thank well, you, sir. speaking of translation and translating for somebody that speaks well, that'd be my friend Greg Stevens, who is over in the book table area with a guest. My friend Greg Stevens. Let's go over there. Thanks, Tim. We always talk about one word from God can change your life. I'm going to show you an example of not just one word, but one encounter or one meeting can change your life. I am in the partner booth right here. I'm in the exhibit hall. All the different ministries are out here. This is a beehive of activity. But we talked about one word, but how about one meeting? You meet the right people. I know people that are sitting in the congregation right now in the, in the arena, and they have their convention friends. They meet up every year here. I'm with Kent and Jennifer Satterfield. A year ago, you met someone in this booth. Tell me what happened. Well, we, we came just on a whim from East Tennessee. And we came at, at the pre-registration, and I was curious about carrying a backpack, so I asked a question, and I ran into um, to Kurt Shellstrom. And, and all of a sudden, that turned into a 45-minute conversation, and he started introducing me to um, several pastors and whatnot, and man, and a fire was ignited inside of me. It was just amazing. So you were just attending? Yeah. You guys we were, came down from East Tennessee. Yes, we were just attending. We had just yeah. partnered with KCM and felt led to come to our first Southwest Believers Convention, and we came and wanted to know if we were allowed to bring a backpack in to carry our Bibles, and we met Kurt, 
And of course, what he, he pulled there? so many people over to meet us. And right. it was great. He even mentioned us from the platform. He mentioned talking to us and us sharing our testimony with him. And he was encouraging others to get in front of the cameras while they're here this week and share their testimonies about what they've done and okay. how, you know, Southwest has changed their okay, lives. Okay, so you went well. back to Tennessee and yes. what happened? And the, the flame, the flame of faith and that fire from the Lord was just stoked inside of us. And I was working in a, an aluminum factory at that time. And and one day I called Jennifer and I said, you know, I'm going to apply for that position, the um, high school pastor job. What position? It was the high school pastor Where at? at Eagle Mountain okay. International Church. For, for the record, yeah. Kent and Jennifer now are on staff yeah. at Eagle Mountain Church. So <laughs> yes. your first Southwest, you come here, you run yes. into some people because you're carrying a backpack. Yeah. That's right. And now you're working here. Yes. yes. And it's not even been a year. It hasn't even been a year yet. You know, uh, Southwest was at the end of July, beginning of August last year. So, and we started on the ministry and our first week was in December 3rd. So you're the community pastor now. Yes, what, is, what does that entail? Well, first time guest, I oversee that process, um, membership, everything within there, getting people connected into the community, you know, making the big church seem small. It's, it's all about family and yeah. we're love is king. So what do you say to encourage people? There are people that are out there watching now and, and uh, they've never been to Southwest or, or they have been and this year they can't come. Uh, sure. What can you say to encourage someone today? Oh, absolutely. It is a grand experience. It really is. Being yeah. here is electric. It is amazing. The Holy Spirit is here. You can feel it. You can feel the atmosphere, the energy. It's awesome. And it will change your life. It really will. Well, Being it did, immersed did, in the it. Word, it will well, change your life. And you didn't come expecting no, to be it, working here. No, no. But it's important to dream big. And then God will take you beyond that, Greg. He'll, he'll take you beyond that. Yes. And you just get in line with God and immerse in the Word. And there's no limits to where God can take you and use you. It's been a wild ride, huh? That's been. right. And it's yes, been exciting it and we love every minute of it. So you never know who you're going to meet yes. and treat every person that you meet as, a, as somebody that's important that's because right. they are. And you never know that your steps are ordained of the Lord. You always have to keep that in, in, in your memory, yes. that my steps are being ordered of the Lord. Yes. So we encourage you that it's not too late. It's not too late not to too come late. to Southwest. Oh, this is only late. morning one. Yes. Right. And so if you want to come on down, come on down. You meet Kent, come yeah. to EMIC, meet, meet them as well. Absolutely. I want to thank you guys so very much for being part of this. Thank and you. I get to work with this guy every day and it's <laughs> just been wonderful yeah. to see what God has done yeah. in your life. It really has been an exciting thing. Tim, you never know who you're going to meet in the exhibit <laughs> hall. I'm going to kick yeah. it back to you. Amen, that's right. We love, we love testimonies like that. You know, we say it all the time, one word from God can change your life forever. And it's absolutely the truth. And my next guest can actually attest to that. I'm joined now by Rick and Denise Renner, Good News Church in Russia. Good morning. Good How morning. are you this morning? So good to see you, brother. Now, speaking of one word from God that can change your life forever, many years ago, God told you, I want you to go to Russia, the former Soviet Union. And open a church, start a church. What did you think when he said that? I was shocked. <laughs> I, I mean, that was not my plan. Right. Actually, I was on a mission trip and I stood up to speak in a Bible school. And when I opened my Bible, God said to me, welcome to your new home. That's the way I found oh, out. Oh my goodness. So the big challenge was how am I going to break the news to Denise? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Denise has always had a heart to follow. And she yeah. said, Rick, I'm not happy today, but I will be when we get on the plane. Yeah. And Tim, it has been the greatest adventure of our life. That's wonderful. We love Russia. We yeah. love the Russian people. Yeah. Where did you get your spiritual training? Where did your training come from? I grew up in a Baptist church. Really? Yes. Well, I, I, most of us did. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> if you're from the South, you, most of you are Baptist. Most of us did, yes. But you know, my mother really had an influence on my life. And she really trained me to love people, to yeah. care for people. Grew up in the church. And I studied Greek at the university. Then he studied music. Oh, wow. And yeah. you know, it's, it's amazing how God prepares you for life. Yeah. I mean, God gave me a brain. Right. He gave Denise a voice. What did he ever? He gave me a brain, too. Well, he gave you a brain, too. <laughs> then he gave you a great voice. My point is that culturally, we, we really are a fit for Russia. Right. Russia, Russia is very uh, intelligent. Right. And very musical. And they're very musical. Right. And I mean, God really made us for Russia. It's Denise, amazing. you are so sweet. I can't imagine you ever not living for the Lord, but you did, <laughs> didn't you? I mean, uh, you, the Lord had to get a hold of you just like He did the rest of he us. He had didn't to he? get a hold of me. <laughs> he got a hold of me good. Yeah. He did. What, what was your upbringing like, and spiritually, and that kind of thing? 
Well, I was raised in a Baptist church. Right. And, but when I was 18 years old, the Holy Spirit came upon me and I gave him my life in a way I'd never had before. Yeah. And I've never been the same since. Right. When did, he, when did you know you had such a beautiful voice? Well. Because you do. I don't know if you guys ever heard Denise sing. It's absolutely <laughs> an experience to hear Denise Renner oh, sing. I mean, you. when did you know that? When did you know that you had a gift in the music? Well, I would say probably in high school. Okay, okay. And so I started studying, but I had such a problem with my own identity that I would just try to be somebody else. I tried to be Barbara Streisand. I tried to be Shirley Jones. Wow. I, I tried to be everybody else but me. And it took me a while to try to be me. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of us do that, don't we? We all, we have to find our own identity in Jesus. And that's the thing. We let other people define who we are instead of letting Jesus define who we are. Mm -hmm. And when you let Jesus do it, then yeah. you do things like preach at a church in Russia and sing operatically. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So when you, when you first started singing, uh, was it, did you have to be trained to, to get where you are today? I trained 17 years. Oh my goodness. I taught for two years. Can you teach me how to sing like that? If I had some time. It, you'd have a whole lot of time. <laughs> it would be a whole lot of time. When you met Rick, what was, did you know right away Rick was the guy for you or? <laughs> <laughs> well, it took a little while. Yeah. And, and honestly, he proposed three times. Three times? Yeah. And I kept taking it back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were proposed to take it back? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Three times. Why, because you weren't sure? Because I was terrified. <laughs> He's a wise man. It, well, you said you were smart, but I'm not sure how smart you were to take it back three <laughs> times. I mean, I literally kept saying, Denise, can we just forget that I proposed to you? Can, can, can we just start all over again? It's three times finally it happened. Wow. Uh, and Best decision I ever made. Absolutely. Absolutely. When God brought you guys together, obviously, you probably did not know the heights that he would take you, did No, you? we didn't. We had no idea. I guess if he'd have probably told you, you'd have probably taken that back too, wouldn't you? You know, walking in faith is such a wonderful thing. It is. The, the challenge in life is just to keep walking with Jesus. Right. Be steady, be right. faithful. And Tim, there's no better life yeah. than to walk with the Lord. How long did it take you to learn that? Well, I'm still <laughs> learning that. Right. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the longer you walk with the Lord, the more solid your steps get. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they just get better and better. Yeah. Now, you guys went over there, started that church, began ministering. And then a few years later, you, of course, you were always hooked up with KCM. But then you helped KCM get on TV over there. Well, Walk we got, us through that experience. We got a phone call from Gloria. Right. And she said, Ken and I want to talk to you. Come to Texas and meet us. So Denise and I flew to Texas, and that was our first personal meeting. You'd with never Ken. met him before. Oh. Well, I grew up. I mean, yeah. I, I was 14 years old when I first saw Kenneth and Gloria on stage. Oh, that's Can awesome. you imagine that? Yes. Gloria had long hair. And <laughs> Kenneth was singing. It was at a Kenneth Hagen camp meeting. Right. So I'd always seen them. But when we sat down with them, they said, well, we want to be your partner. They gave us a check. And that really started our relationship. Right. And Gloria said that day, my dream is to go on TV in the Soviet Union. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. And before I realized what I said, I said, well, sure. And when it came out of my mouth, I thought, what did you just say? Because we had just gone on television. And you couldn't take that back. Couldn't take that back. <laughs> but we did it. And we've been broadcasting. Believer's Voice of Victory for all these years. Was Isn't it amazing? hard? Was it hard to get on TV there? Was it difficult? No. No? It was hard for others, but I had grace. Hey. Grace makes the difference. That's the truth. And That's uh, the truth. I mean, I met with communist leaders. Tim, I wish that I could take you back in time with me to walk into those communist deputies' office. And on the wall behind them were big pictures of Lenin. And I would sit in those offices and think, wow, this is such a ridiculous scenario. How am I going to negotiate to broadcast the Bible, but I walked out of every one of those offices with contracts. My it, it was amazing. Just had a grace to do it. And wasn't it back then that women preachers weren't real popular back then on television or women in general? And so they saw a tape of glory and they loved her. They loved her. Yeah. They loved her. Yeah. That, well, I mean, how can you not love her? Yeah, that's absolutely. What I was say. How absolutely. Can you not love yeah. Glory is like yeah. Darling. She's yeah. just precious. <laughs> And it wasn't always easy to get the broadcast to the stations either, was it? Talk about that, that process. We had to physically carry the programs. And not just that, back in those days, there were no banks. So we had to physically carry the cash. And it was so dangerous. We had one courier who had a pair of shoes made and the 
the sole of the shoes were hollow and he could, it was almost like get smart. He could, he could take his shoes apart, put the cash in the shoes, put the shoes back together and he would literally walk the cash yeah. into countries. Oh my goodness. And people wouldn't even know it was there. And it was all done by cash. It was all done by cash in those days. Oh my God. And people literally put their lives on the line to broadcast these programs. Wasn't, I mean, there, a, wasn't there a station that tried to take it off the air? And the oh, people, more than one. And the people came down and said, no, we're not letting you do that? In the Soviet Republic of Georgia, right. there was a demonstration. They wanted to remove Believer's Voice of Victory. And there was literally a convergence of hundreds and hundreds of people at the station to say, no, you're not going to remove this TV program. And it was, it was amazing. Oh my gosh. And now you've come full circle. Your broadcast, television broadcast, is now on the Believer's Voice Network. That's right. What, can you fathom what that's like it's, all those years you later? Know, it's such a privilege to be a part of BVOVN, and yeah. I'm sure everybody in this room loves BVOVN. <laughs> I just love that channel. Yeah, right. It's yeah, wonderful. there's nothing like it. There's absolutely I mean, nothing I mean, like Tim, it. I mean, think about it. You all from Fort Worth, Texas, <laughs> are impacting the world. Right. You're impacting the world. Yeah. And you're helping us do it. Well, thank you. You're helping us do it in what you're doing. And you. I know when you're ministering uh, in your church there, uh, the people have such a hunger for God, don't they? Oh, they have such a hunger. You know, when you, you preach the word to them, yeah. they say, I'm going to do that. Mm. And, they, and they actually change. Yeah. And they come back and they tell you, I did this and I did this and this is what happened. Right. Can I tell you something else? Oh, sure. In Russia, nobody talks about when they got saved. I have never heard anybody say, back when I got saved. Right. They all say, I mean, all of them say, back when I repented. They all talk about oh. when they repented. Nobody says when I got saved. It was not just a, a new modification of life. Every person talks about repentance. Okay, expand on that for a minute. I love what you just said. Expand on that to the people. Why that's important. Repentance is important. Well, because if you don't repent, first of all, you're not saved. Yes. I mean, Jesus launched his ministry with the word repent. So did John the Baptist, so did Peter, so did Paul. If you don't repent, you don't come in. It's the birth canal through which we come into the kingdom of God. And in yeah. Russia, I mean, it's amazing to me. You say to people, when did you get saved? They'll say, you mean, when did I repent? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. They all understand that it was a life change. Yes, yes. And Tim, it's amazing when people come to Christ because repentance is so strong, they literally walk out of alcoholism. Praise they walk God. out of drug addiction. Praise when people Lord. come to Christ in Russia, they are really saved. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's just amazing. I know you've seen miracles over the years that you've been there. Can you remember off the top of your head, maybe one that stands out to you the most, a miracle that you guys have witnessed? Well, I, I'm thinking of a miracle that just happened just recently. We were standing, we were in our, in our church, and the Holy Spirit gave me a word of knowledge, and He said, "I want to grow somebody's leg out right now, and the power of God's going to come on them." And I thought, "Oh Lord, okay." <laughs> so I went, <laughs> and so I stood up there and I gave that word of knowledge, and two women. One, one had been injured from birth, and she stood crooked. Uh -huh. And God was touching her right when the word was coming. The, the power of God came on her. She came up to me after the service. She stood straight on her feet. She praise. said, I was never able to do this. Oh, my. Praise God. Oh, isn't Jesus wonderful? Uh, he is, he is, he is wonder wonderful. Oh, he is wonderful. <laughs> yes, he is. And just last month, we had a woman in our service. She said, I'm full of cancer. The doctors just gave me up. And, you know, I, I didn't even pray for her. I just said, well, you know what? You're healed. Take it by right. faith. She right. said, I take it. You know what? The next day she was, she was cleared. She had no cancer. God. Gone. That just happened last God month. God is so good. And the other thing that God has allowed you guys to do is be a part of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. You guys yes. have come down and ministered there. And uh, talk about that first class, that very first class of KCBC, and really how historic that is. Well, first of all, there's nothing more important than this book. You bet. You bet. And at the Bible College, that's the emphasis. And it's so wonderful to see a Bible school, oh, there we go, yeah. where people are really teaching the Bible. Yes. And those students are just being loaded. Yes. And Tim, if anybody's looking to have better education in the Bible and to be prepared for ministry, 
I can't imagine a better place to go. Absolutely. It's so wonderful. Absolutely. It's in the atmosphere there. There is so much humility and hunger and in faith. that room. And faith. And faith. faith. Yeah. And so you just come in there and you're just taken in by that atmosphere. You can't help but get encouraged and learn and change. Yeah. And, that's cool. and you know, we're very close to George and Terry. Absolutely. Yes. And so we feel their presence there. Terry's yes. doing such a great job of directing the Bible school. Mm-hmm. I think Pastor George is like the premier example of what a pastor should be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, absolutely. Yes, he is. And do you get, what kind of response have you gotten from the students? Oh, they're, uh, they're, they just want more and more and more. Yes. I mean, it's such a privilege. Especially from a guy like you who's got all the knowledge you have. How many, how many books have you written? I don't know, maybe 50. 50 books. Maybe. 50 books. I can barely write a message on my iPad. Oh, come on. <laughs> and you're writing 50 books. That's amazing. That's, we're, that knowledge came from heaven, I'm sure. But I mean, that's just, that's just great that you know all that you know. I, I got to sit with you sometime and let you teach me some things. Okay. I know you've got a lot you could teach me. I think you could teach me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can't thank you guys enough for coming in and doing this. Thank this you, Tim. For being a part of what we're doing at KCM. We I love know, Kenneth and I know, and all of our partners and friends, they love you. And, and I appreciate you guys so much and the ministry and the love that you bring to what we're doing. I, it's just, it's a blessing to have you guys. Thank it's a privilege to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you, but, brother. You know, we, <laughs> thank you. Go ahead. Uh, we started, obviously, this morning with our live program, but this thing took about two or three or four days to get started setting all this up. Take a look at what, t- what took place before we got here this morning. I turned left on Houston today, coming down, seeing all of our flags on the flagpoles that, man, we're putting a stake in the ground here for Southwest. have an impact on somebody's future. My, you know, it takes about two or three days to get all this thing going. And when you walk in here, it looks like it just kind of came up. And it did kind of just come up, didn't it? It did. It just, okay. Now, you were telling me Rick's new book comes out tomorrow. Rick Renner has a new book, How to Keep Your Head on Straight When the World's Gone Crazy. Something to that effect. Look for it. <laughs> boy, if we ever needed a book that How describes did, today. Boy, isn't that the truth? And you know, yeah. Tim, the answer to all of that is prayer. Absolutely it is. You know, this ministry is celebrating 52 years this year. We're celebrating 40 years of the Sunday broadcast. We're celebrating 30 years of the daily broadcast and none of it, of and 39th Southwest, none of it would be successful without prayer. And I don't know anybody that does it better than Pastor, Pastor Terry Copeland Terry. Ter- Pearson. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you, to, you can apply to that. Uh, it's, she, it's not just I mean, everybody prays. We all pray. Right. But some people have an anointing they or, or are calling yes. to pray. God yes. has always had somebody yes. stand in that place right. in, in times of crisis and in, in, in good times and pray. <laughs> yeah. And she's one of those right. people. I believe God's called for this generation. <laughs> and here she is. I and look at her. And there she is. 
I, we prayed, I, and there I, you are. I, <laughs> that was great. Translated me out here. Praise the Lord.